In Britain, the government there is planning new legislation to punish extremists responsible for rising tensions over the war in Gaza. As special correspondent Malcolm Brabant tells us, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is concerned that both Jewish and Muslim communities are being targeted and that social cohesion is under threat. Support for the Palestinian cause in the city of Brighton is particularly vocal, and protesters wore black to mourn for Gaza and show disdain for Rishi Sunak's urgent speech to the nation last Friday. In recent weeks and months, we have seen a shocking increase in extremist disruption and criminality. What started as protests on our streets has descended into intimidation, threats and planned acts of violence. The Brighton demonstration was peaceful, but organiser Russell Craddock didn't like the scrutiny of our camera. Who are you filmed for? Uh, American television. Uh, uh, I'm not giving you permission to film. I, I, I have permission to film because this is an open space. Someone wants to stand in front of him. Like, Freedom to film in public places is a long-standing British tradition, but national values, including tolerance, are under strain. Jewish children fearful to wear their school uniform, lest it reveal their identity. Muslim women abused in the street for the actions of a terrorist group they have no connection with. Now our democracy itself is a target. Across the square, Jewish residents stood guard around a memorial to victims of the Hamas terrorist attack on southern Israel on October the 7th. The day after the October 7th massacres, on October 8th, they had a demonstration in the center of the city and they had a speaker who praised the October 7th massacre and said that it was a day of celebration. That's who these people are. Adam Marnit's 18-year-old cousin Maya was murdered on October the 7th. Her father was kidnapped and remains a hostage. If you speak to any Jew in the, in, the, in the country, many of them will be experiencing heightened sense of insecurity and fear from weekly protests, people shouting at them when they exit their, their synagogues, people um, harassing them on social media. I mean, social media is a, a sewer right now. On the other side of town, former dancer Lee Whitaker carried a bundle to represent children killed by Israel's bombardment of Gaza. You can see what extremists we are, you know, and uh, that is just, just Rishi Sunak, you know. Uh, he's making trouble. It's, it's, it's actually our protests, the protests of love. The, the big thousands of us uh, marching in London. I have never seen any trouble. There's, there's such a wonderful feeling of camaraderie. In London, the mayor, Sadiq Khan, is concerned that anti-Muslim bigotry is also on the rise. What we're witnessing is a concerted and growing attempt by some to degrade and humiliate minorities for political and electoral gain. But an angry and chaotic debate in Parliament about Gaza last month raised fears about intimidation. House Speaker, Sir Lindsay Hoyle. I am very, very concerned about the security of all members. This chant is at the centre of government concerns. While some right-wing Israeli factions use from the river to the sea to taunt Palestinians about expulsion, Jewish groups regard the pro-Palestinian version as a threat to wipe Israel off the map. It was projected onto Parliament's clock tower as members were arguing about the war. MPs do not feel safe in their homes. There is no context in which it can be acceptable to beam anti-Semitic tropes onto Big Ben in the middle of a vote on Israel-Gaza. No, I don't think it was just politicking. He was effectively drawing attention to what he, and I think also the official opposition, regard as, as something of, of real significance and if, if not urgency. Jonathan Hall monitors extremism as part of his role reviewing Britain's terrorism laws. I haven't seen such open hostility towards categories of individuals um, as, I, as, I, as I have since 7th of October. That willingness, almost a brazenness, to go out on the streets and to be really vile and horrible and invite hatred and in some circumstances violence against people by category is something that we haven't really seen. What do we say? Say in Brighton, demonstration organiser Russell Craddock gave his verdict on Rishi Sunak's plans to crack down on extremism. We won't be intimidated by Sunak. We won't be intimidated by the Met. We won't be intimidated by so-called... Claims of violent anti-Semitism.
And this was Russell Craddock the day after the Hamas terrorist attack. So amazingly, incredibly, most of the Hamas fighters apparently lied in their way. I know Someone who glorifies a terrorist organisation um, and, and is reckless, so takes the risk that someone will be encouraged to support that organisation, does commit an offence. The Kaddish, the traditional Jewish prayer of mourning, next to a memorial that has frequently been vandalised. Across town, white flags for the Palestinian dead, and that chant, which local police say can warrant arrest in aggravating circumstances. We approached the man with the megaphone. Can I ask you a question, please? Sorry. Can you just uh, explain don't, to me? Don't, don't, no, I can't allow to do this because no, this you, is a you're not allowed to take photos yes, of me. I'm in no. a public space. We're here to support people that have been massacred and murdered, children and babies, and you're here sticking that in people's faces. No. Don't you think that's disgraceful? No, I don't. I'm just merely asking a question. About no, you're issue. not. Yes, you I came am. and picked on this man. Because he was actually chanting. Palestine! Right. The police ushered us away, because here, asking questions risks a breach of the peace. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant.